Today, I want to teach you guys all about negative space management in graffiti. We're going to be talking about what it is and how it works. But before we hop into it, I want to let you guys know this is part of our renewed tutorial series where we're going to be going through all the fundamentals, teaching you guys a lot more about how these things work. So be sure to watch the entire playlist if you want to learn everything there is to know about graffiti. And if you really want to make the learning process of graffiti as easy as humanly possible, pick up our brand new book we just released that is a comprehensive guide to graffiti. It teaches you everything you need to know and it has a bunch of information that has never been taught anywhere online. So negative space management, what exactly is this? As the name suggests, it is the management of all of the negative space within your name. Now some of you guys who have studied other letter based art forms like calligraphy, typography, so on and so forth, you might understand this as kerning. But this is a little bit different than kerning because kerning describes the space between two different letters. Now in graffiti, when you're managing negative space, you're not only managing the negative space within a singular letter, for example your open and closed counters, but you're also managing the negative space of all the letters in general, the name in general, which includes the space between two different letters just like kerning, but it also includes the negative space created by your exterior details and other elements of graffiti as well. Things such as your 3D drop shadow, your extensions, and once again exterior details like your key line and things of that nature. So what are some of the different kinds of negative spaces that we might end up running into as graffiti artists? Well, first things first, let's go ahead and take our name right here as an example. We're going to use the name Grim, it's the name I use, and we have each one of these letters. Well, in order for these letters to come together and make a name, they have to be within a certain range of one another. In other words, they need to be pretty close together. They can't have too much negative space. If you have too much negative space, this ends up making your name look disjointed. Each letter will look like its own separate entity and it won't flow with the other letters in the name. So for each one of these to come together and make a name, they gotta be close together. Now in graffiti, we like a slightly tighter negative space. And the reason for this is because it influences flow in a positive way. The closer things are, the more they flow. However, we don't want our letters to overlap too much, otherwise you begin to obscure one letter over another. So to avoid this, we enjoy a modest overlap. Enough in order to enhance flow, but not enough to obscure a letter. Because keep in mind, our objective isn't to get rid of all negative space, you need negative space in order to create letter structures. Negative space is good. This is a good starting spot right here. Our letters are close enough together to make a word, and we can begin. If we draw a box around the entire word, what we have is what's called our total space. This is the amount of negative space created by the general shape of our name. Now typically if you're doing just basic print font letters and you're practicing the fundamentals, you're not really going to have any issues with your total space. Because the total space will be more so dictated by the letter structures themselves and out of the box standard, this will be perfectly fine. But once you start adding style, once you start moving letters around and positioning things a little bit differently, adding extensions here or there, or adding 3D drop shadow, so on and so forth in the case of throwies and pieces, that's when your total space is going to start to expand. But more on that a little bit later. Next up, within the individual letters, you might notice on the G, we have something called an open counter. This is the negative space that is not fully enclosed by the letter structure itself. And then on the letter R, we have something called a closed counter. And this is a negative space that is completely enclosed by the letter structure. What's really important to understand about closed and open counters is this negative space is created entirely by the letter structure. You're never going to just draw a closed counter wherever you want it. And this is something that we oftentimes see with new graffiti arts when they attempt throwies in pieces. Instead, try to make sure your open and closed counters are created by the actual letter structure themselves. So if we take this piece right here, once again, a letter R, you'll see that this line of our closed counter lines up perfectly with this line right here. And the reason for that is because our first line from the closed counter and this line right here is just the stem of the letter R. The stem of the letter R connecting to the bottom all of the letter R is what creates that closed counter. So try to refrain from drawing that closed counter wherever you want. Now those are the basic negative spaces you're going to be working with. You'll notice if we take a letter and we slide it up or slide it down, we're gonna end up creating more negative space either above or below the letter. And this can be a little bit problematic because when you do this, you'll end up creating something called a valley. This is also referred to as a cup or a pocket and all it is is when you have essentially one high point followed by a low point followed by another high point. This creates that that valley we're talking about, which is a void of negative space. Now negative space is very situational because it can either drag people's attention to that area or it can pull attention away. It can give weight to a certain section or it can take weight back. Once again, that's very situational, but oftentimes in graffiti, we're looking for balance. And because we're looking for balance, we oftentimes want to fill these valleys. So how do we do that? Well, in the case of something very simple and something very basic like this right here, we would just want to make sure our letters are all resting on the baseline and reach the cap line. This this will ensure 
remember that all of our letters are the same height and as a result, we don't really create any big valleys. But in more stylized work or in something like throwies or pieces, you can use extensions, exterior details, and other things like 3D or drop shadow in order to help fill in these pockets. So you'll notice with this grab piece right here, if we look at the very top of the A and we draw a line from there all the way over, we end up with a pretty large pocket from our total space. So how does he fill this? He smacks in a little bit of a chip right here and throws in just a bit of exterior detail and boom, there you go. The negative space is all filled in. Nothing to worry about. And we have another beautiful example right here where if you draw a line from the very top of the H all the way to the E, then you end up with a pretty significant valley. And we're leaving the S out of this for a reason and I'll explain that in a minute. But the question for now is how does he fill in that valley between the H and the E? Well, he goes ahead and takes 3D and shoots it on over to the right hand side. That way the H can extend its 3D into that valley. He then goes ahead and takes some of the purple and the pink exterior detail in order to really fill in that valley. And even a tiny extension swings on into that pocket as well in order to help fill things in. Now, like I said earlier in the video, negative space can help add weight to certain things, help bring attention to certain areas, which might be something that you want. Notice how much larger his S is than every other letter in this name. He clearly wants that to stand out, and it also creates a pretty significant valley, which he does little to fill in that pocket. And that's kind of the point. He does do a little bit in order to fill in some of that negative space. That way the S doesn't have way too much to where it's a little bit imbalanced, but he does allow for just enough in order to make the S really stand out, which is clearly what he wanted with the S's size. And notice how he's only using negative space really at the top of the S and not the bottom. Yeah, he certainly could have had a lot of weight at the bottom, but that would have created too much weight for the S, which is clearly something he didn't want, as he goes to great lengths to fill in a lot, if not all of the negative space at the bottom of the S. Now here's the thing though, you don't always have to fill these pockets. Sometimes you might want these to be there in order to add some weight to that area. Now something that's really important to understand about negative space is negative space that accumulates below your letters is a lot more critical than negative space above your letters. And I can demonstrate this very easily, right? Let's say we have our phone here and there's negative space beneath my phone. Well then look at that. There's some anticipation. There's some gravity that's going to happen here. We expect my phone to fall. But if there's negative space above my phone, the phone doesn't care. Nothing happens with the phone. And the same principle applies in art. In art, there's always a sense of gravity, and that gravity creates anticipation. So when you have a letter suspended in midair with negative space underneath it, there is anticipation for the letter to fall, which is why negative space underneath your letters adds weight. However, when you have negative space above your letters, the letter almost seems to cradle the negative space. It seems to hold it. And that doesn't mean that the negative space doesn't have any weight. It just means that its weight is less detrimental. Because keep in mind, having a lot of negative space above a letter might indicate that a different fundamental is wrong. For example, if we have a lot of negative space above our letter right here, well then that might mean that our letter is too small, which means its structure is too weak, and as a result, the letter's weight is too little. All of that is indicated just by the negative space alone. Now some letters give people a lot of problems, letters that tend to push other letters away, whether it's a letter on the left or a letter on the right. Some of you guys already know some of the ones I'm talking about. Things like T, L, A, V, these are all problematic letters. So how do we deal with difficult to work with letters like these? Without the need of having to do anything crazy with style or anything of the sort. We, we need a simple fundamental solution for this and we have plenty. Let's take something like L or T for example. Both of these letters create a lot of negative space above or below their letter structures. Something like letter P also suffers from this. While L on the other hand creates a lot of negative space above the letter structure. As you know, negative space above the structure doesn't necessarily have a lot of impact as far as weight is concerned, but it does push the stem of the L further away from the next letter, making it hard to flow. So how do we do this? Well, if we look at the negative space right here, all we have to do is tilt the letter very slightly, and you'll notice the negative space gets narrowed. There's not as much of it now. Another thing that can really help in the L's case is you can bend the L very slightly in order to help bring it closer to the right hand side. If you combine this with the lean, then you can find yourself flowing very easily. So check this out. One of the problems with letters like T and J and even L is the fact that the next letter can't get close enough in order to fill the negative space. That's a bit problematic. So let's talk about letters like T and J. In these cases, you can go ahead and raise the letter higher. Just be sure to go ahead and take your stem and bring it back down to the baseline because we don't want to create negative space underneath our already problematic letter. Now, yes, that'll make the T and other letters like it taller, sure, and it's also going to create more negative space, but now you can solve the issue where it's no longer pushing the next letter away. You can take your next letter and slide it in close in order to fill in all of that negative space, meaning it's 
no longer problematic. Just be sure not to go overboard with this, make tiny adjustments. And for something like L, we can do the exact opposite, where we can lower the letter and take the stem, raise it to the cap line. Once again, be very subtle with how you do this. If you go overboard, it's very easy for this to backfire on you. More diagonal letters like A or V benefit greatly from a very slight lean. Once again, be very subtle with all these changes, I, I promise you. It is very easy to take these overboard. And lastly, remember, negative space isn't always a problem. Even if you have a lot of it, it's not always a problem. A tag like this is perfectly fine with all the negative space included. So before you make any adjustments, make sure that the negative space is actually problematic first. Because more times than not, especially if you're keeping it simple, the negative space isn't a problem. Now the next natural question is, all right, well, if I do a piece on my book or on a wall, isn't the rest of the wall or the book my total space? Like, doesn't all of that negative space factor in? And the answer is not really. And this is where total space comes into play, because that's really the predominant amount of negative space that's going to have an impact and an influence on your letters themselves. As you can see right here, all this extra space isn't really playing a role in our letters. However, if we have a piece of our letter that extends far over here, and another piece that extends far over here, well then now suddenly we've pushed the boundaries of our total space for our letters here, for our name. And as a result, we've also created a larger valley. Not to mention, now that our total space is larger in general for the name as a whole, well now suddenly all of our other letters look smaller within that total space. Now that's going a bit off the deep end, that's going a bit in depth as far as how total space functions and the influence that can have, but for a basic tutorial I think this is a good start. In short, if you're brand new to graffiti and you're just starting up, keep things simple and practice the basics. Focus on your basic fundamentals and you won't have any issue with negative space at all whatsoever because negative space is more so a result of how you perform the actual letters themselves. But if you're a little bit more intermediate or a little bit more advanced, well then start considering how you're overlapping your letters, start considering your valleys and your total space and how you can influence those different things. But dudes, that just about wraps up today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and if you feel like you learned something, then you're definitely going to love the book we just released recently. It's a comprehensive guide to graffiti, teaches you everything you have to know, and has more information just in the glossary alone than any how to do graffiti book out there on the market currently. We talk about topics that have never been discussed in graffiti, we teach you exactly how to flow your letters if you've been struggling with that. We teach you all about negative space management and much, much more. You can pick it up in the description down below and be sure to check out the rest of our tutorial series right up here. With more graffiti content right down here and I'll catch you guys back here next week. Thanks for watching.